Good morning. Uh, today we are going to learn about some of the important questions of JTAG. <clears throat> Describe how to configure a JTAG chain with multiple devices. So that means JTAG is connected to the multiple devices. So configuring the JTAG chain with the multiple device involving connecting them in a dicey chain configuration. That means cascading. Connect the TDI input of JTAG controller to the TDI input of the first device. The TDO pin of the first device is connected to TDI pin of the second device and so on. Like a uh, chain pa pattern. Output of the one device is connected to the input of the other device. How the multiplexer, uh, sorry, how <clears throat> flip flops are connected uh, to form a scan chain like that. So connect the TDO pin of the last device to the TDO pin of the JTAG controller. Okay. Ensure that TCK TMS signals are connected in parallel to all the devices. So actually we can say that TDI and TDO are series. TCK and TMS are parallel connections. So each device has a unique instruction register length must be accounted for, uh, for when shifting a data through chain. Next question. Explain the JTAG state machine and its importance. The, actually, it is a 16-bit state machine. The JTAG state machine or a tap controller state machine is a finite state machine that controls the JTAG interface. So it can be used to control the JTAG interface consisting of 16 states used to manage the data flow and control the signals for testing and debugging. The state machine provide a standardized method for accessing and controlling a device's internal states facilitating the boundary scan testing in system programming and debugging. Next question is what are the common JTAG instructions and what do they do? Actually, most commonly used JTAG instructions are bypass. It is a single bit bypass register. So common JTAG instructions include bypass, which allows the data to be bypassed the device. The next one is X-Test. It is also most commonly used for testing the external circuitry. That means the interconnection between the two devices. Sample preload for capturing the input values. And uh, ID code. <coughs> In test clamp highs, all these are the optional instructions. So these three are the mandatory instructions. So ID code for retrieving the device ID, in test for testing the internal logic, clamp for forcing the output fins to fixed state, highs for placing output fins in a high impedance state. The next question is how does the test access port tap controller work? The text access port controller is a finite state machine that manages the JTAG interface operations. 16 bit finite state machine. It consisting of states that control the data shifting in, into or out of the devices test logic, ensuring the correct sequence of operations for JTAG instructions. Some key states are test logic reset, first starting state, then it will move to the Run ideal state, shift DR, shift, uh, sorry, shift IR, shift DR, capture IR, capture DR, update IR, update DR. So all these states movements can be controlled with the help of TMS and TCK. TMS based on the TMS value and the clock. So these state, uh, the state mission is going to move all these states. The tab controller transition between these states based on the TMS and the TCK signals. And next one is <clears throat> what are the main differences between the boundary scan and the in-system programming? This is one of the most important question. Boundary scan and in-system programming are techniques used in the testing and programming of electronic devices. Boundary scan defined by the IEEE 14 uh, IEEE 1149.1 1 test interconnect interconnections between ICs and a PCB without physical probes. Without physical probes, we can able to implement the boundary scan using the tap and shift uh, shift registers, tap controller and shift registers. ISP in system programming allows the programming of the device memory while installed in the system, commonly used for firmware updates. The key difference 
include boundaries can focus on testing of interconnections and ISP focus on programming memory. <clears throat> Next question is describe the components of the typical JTAG interface. Yeah, components of the JTAG interface. Typical JTAG interface consists of several components that facilitate the testing and debugging of electronic circuit. This includes test access port tap, tap controller, which is the primary interface for the communication. The instruction register holding the current instructions. Data register shifting the data in or, in or out. A state machine that controls the data and the instruction flow. And a boundary scan cells for observing and controlling of controlling of the device pins. Next question is explain the basic concept of JTAG and its primary purpose. So this is a very basic question. A JTAG or a giant action group is a standard for testing and verifying the integrity of printed circuit boards and integrated circuits. Its primary purpose is to specify the boundary scan testing, which allows for the testing of interconnections on PCB without physical test probes. This is achieved using the test access port and boundary scan cells integrated into the ICs. The JTAG standard officially IEEE 1149.1 defines the protocol for communication and controlling of these tabs and boundary scan cells, enabling the boundary scan testing in system programming and debugging. That's it. Uh, we'll meet our next lecture. Please share and subscribe my videos.